grew up in San Antonio with my dad taking me down to our family ranch since I was two years old. And he did things on the ranch like building fences and really enjoyed and appreciated doing the work himself. And so I grew up kind of around that and did that myself, doing repairs on the ranch. And my uncle, my dad, and I built the new rod room out back. Kind of just assumed that that was the way things worked. <laughs> It was in college when I really took a liking to fishing and met a guy, Ryan Cedars, in Driftwood, Texas. Ryan was kind enough to show me after hours how to build my own rod. And then I built a rod for my dad. And then folks learned that, that I now knew how to build fly rods. And so someone asked me if I would build a rod for them. And then it just kind of took off from there. And was, I've often described it as an inflated hobby, but it has also been a little um, business on the side of my ministry or, or seminary training. You obviously always want tension with the wrap that will cover the foot of the guide. Five to eight wraps out. Put the loop through with the wrap a few more times. So now it looks very clean. And there we go. They're both custom shaped handles. This fly rod has 13 cork rings. I recently heard from James Proseg. He's a painter and fly fisher and, and writer. And he talks about fishing and the mystery that lies below the water. Through angling, you get to encounter that mystery that dry fly dancing on top of the surface of the water and that anticipation of something more happening. Similar, I think, to what the Celts call thin places, where these two worlds meet. And so you see this world as it's given and as it's sort of reflected off the water and then that sort of extraordinary world that lies beyond us that sometimes can shock us, surprise us, and interrupt us. What if we live that way all the time and just went through life with that anticipation sure that God will hit that fly because he will the mystery breaks into our world the extraordinary hits our ordinary lives and and that's exciting we have these sacraments that are outward and visible signs of the inward and spiritual graces given by Christ I think we can lead these sacramental lives that aren't limited to to what we gain from church someone in, in seminary said um, yeah, there's probably going to be fishing in heaven. It's probably going to be catch and release, but yeah, I think they'll be fishing in heaven. <laughs>